Praise the Lord, everybody. I'm coming with today's word. God is speaking. Today, I want to go to a couple of verses of scripture because I was looking in my phone actually this morning and I always see a message on my phone because I do so many, um, you know, devotionals on my phone, um, things for my online Christian store. I have to take pictures of my items so I can post them on my store. And so I have so many photos and videos always just kind of growing in my phone. And it is a constant message on there, you know, that my storage is filling up, that, you know, I need to delete some items. You don't have enough room to upload this. There's not enough space. And always having to go in and delete some files because I can't do anything else until I get rid of some stuff. And so I say that because oftentimes we find that we can't move forward or can't get to the things that we need to do or the things we need to accomplish or the place spiritually that we need to be. We can't move forward because there's so much that we keep holding on to that we need to delete and get rid of. And I just want to look at a couple verses of scripture because at some point we have to stop even during the day, even every week and look at things that we've been grabbing hold of, letting latch onto us weights and burdens and, and events that have, you know, maybe hurt our feelings, things that irritated us, things that we've attached to our ourselves, comments that others have made, um, you know, just different weights and, and cares and burdens and worries that have, that bind us up at, you know, day after day, if we're not careful to release it, let it go, seek repentance, forgiveness, cleansing, forgive others, let some things go, cast off some stuff. So I just want to read a couple of verses of scripture because at some point, you know, we need to just keep stopping and deleting, deleting, deleting. So it tells us in Ephesians chapter 4 verses 31 and 32 let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice and be ye kind one to another tender-hearted forgiving one another even as God for Christ's sake has forgiven you so this tells us about putting off and putting on and you know I like this chapter because you can also go back some verses and read some other things where it tells you to you know put off lying speak the truth and but these I wanted to look at because bitterness wrath anger clamor evil speaking these are things that separate us from God. These are things that weigh us down and cause us to be in a spiritual prison and bind us up. And then the next verse says, be kind one to another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another. It's like put off the bitterness and the wrath, the anger, the clamor, the evil speaking, the malice, get rid of that. And then it says love. It, you know, it's, it's telling us to be kind, tenderhearted, forgiving. And so these are the things you can't do these things if you hold on to these things. It's hard to be kind and loving and pleasant to everyone operating in spiritual fruit when you are walking around angry, separated from God because you're bitter. You're holding on to unforgiveness and, and clamor and, and, you know, seeking revenge, malice and all these different things. So you got to release these things. You have to get rid of them and let them go and toss them off. And then you got to forgive and love. And this is the way when we're tenderhearted and, and forgiving and then we can love freely. Then we can be kind hearted. Then, you know, then we find the release and the peace and we can, we're in right standing with God because he says, if we don't forgive, we won't be forgiven. So we have to let go of those things. I know that sometimes people say things, they do things, they mean evil to us, but the Bible tells us to overcome evil with good. And so. These are some things that are waste. The Bible tells us um, in 1 Peter 5 and 7, casting all your care upon him because he cares for you. So God cares about us. And sometimes we carry burdens and we carry around cares. The Bible tells us to cast our burdens on him. You know, when you think about casting your cares on him, that means getting rid of those things that you allow to weigh you down. Um, when we think about, you know, casting, it's, it's tossing off and getting rid of, throwing it off of you. And so we need to, to, to cast our care. What is a care? It's those feelings of concern, those things that are worrying you, those things that, you know, are concerning you, troubling you, those things that bother you throughout the day, um, those things that, you know, you, it, most of them, you know, we are worrying about things that haven't happened, worrying about what's going to happen, uh, worrying about things we can't change, can't fix. We know it's impossible with us, but it's possible with God. So cast it over on him and get rid of those worries and those cares, those burdens, those things that weigh you down, that are troubling you throughout the day. And so that 
we can get rid of. And we find ourselves, when you get rid of those worries and all of those different things going through your mind, now you can focus on God. What's the importance of that? Because Isaiah 26 and 3 says that he will give you perfect peace if your mind is stayed on him because you trust him. When you trust God and keep your mind on him, there is no worry because you're trusting him for what you cannot do. You're trusting him so you don't have to worry about this and care about that. You're just giving it over to the one who's able to do something about it. And then I'll just pick one more. Which other one do I want? There's so many that we can that we can look at. Um, let's, uh, I don't know. <laughs> okay, let's do, you know, there's so many on, there's so many verses of scripture that I was looking at. But, you know, I just want you to be able to focus on two or three verses of scripture. Um because uh, uh, Hebrews chapter 12, verse one, because then you, you meditate on it day and night, and then you're careful to do what the word says. So you can be prosperous and have good success. Like it tells us in Joshua chapter one. And so in Hebrews chapter 12, verse one, it says, wherefore seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which does so easily beset us and let us run with patience the race that is set before us. And I like to go there because, um, you know, it's telling us to let go um, of that weight, you know, and, and when you have sin that you've been holding on to, when you, um, you, you have things in your life that are that are really a uh, 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 really a setup, a snare, something to make you trip up and fall. If you're holding on to ungodly things and people and habits and things in your life, it causes you to trip up. We're in a spiritual race where we're constantly supposed to be moving forward closer to God so he will move closer to us. If you draw near to him, he draws near to you. We're supposed to be running this race with Christ. We're supposed to be moving forward ahead in spiritual gifts and spiritual fruit and spiritual maturity, spiritual progress, doing the work of the ministry because Coming who we're purposed to be, doing the work we've been called to do, walking in the assignment we've been given. And in order for us to keep moving forward in this race, then we need to let go of some weights because when you are trying to run a race, um, it tells, you know, it, well, when we're trying to run a race and you're carrying weights on you, you have baggage on you in the natural, it would slow you down. You would have to drop off if you're carrying a, a book bag with weights in it and you're trying to run a race, you're not going to get very far. It's going to weigh you down. It's going to slow you down. It's going to make you want to quit and give up. And so you have to be able to let go of some weights. And so that verse of scripture is telling us, let go of those weights that uh, that so easily beset you. Let aside those things, you know, that'll trip you up, lay them, look, put them away, get rid of them. And then you can run this race. It says with patience, it's like you can just go at a steady pace and you don't get overwhelmed and overtired, tripped up, knocked down. So let go of some of the things that are non-productive in your life so you can grab hold of the new things that God is doing. I have to get rid of the old videos and the old pictures and the old documents and the old things that I've scanned and I've taken photos of it and that I've, you know, just used up all of my storage space in my phone. I have to delete it. I have to get rid of it. I have to put it off in a cloud somewhere so that I can get some new things and some better things and some good things. And so this uh, Hebrews chapter 12 in the Amplify says, therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses who have, who by faith have testified to the truth of God's absolute faithfulness, stripping off every unnecessary weight and the sin which so easily and cleverly entangles us, let us run with endurance and active and persistence the race that is set before us. So we want to run with endurance and active persistence, just constant, just with patience, you know, just going with endurance and just run the race. And you'll find that you can get through things because if you keep a bunch of anger and unforgiveness and bitterness and wrath and clamor on you, then everything that happens is going to make you mad. Everything's going to make you snap. Everything's going to make you want to give up. Everything is going to want to make you fight because you're just adding more and more and more and more until you're on overload. No, get rid of that and forgive and let it go so that when someone approaches you or something happens, you won't be in that mode. In fact, maybe something that used to 
bother you won't bother you because you've gotten rid of a bunch of garbage. So let go of the stuff that you don't need. Get rid of the stuff that shouldn't be there so that you're open to receive the new thing God has for you and that you can move forward with patience this race. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for each of us to let go of the things that shouldn't be in our life. People, places, things, habits, burdens, cares, worries, unforgiveness, bitterness, rage, strongholds, soul ties, whatever it may be, Father, search our hearts, reveal to us anything that is not of you, Father. Help us to be cleansed, purged, pruned. Help us to drop off, lay aside, and get rid of everything that is not of you, God, that we may walk in the center of your perfect will in agreement with you, God, and accomplish the things you purpose for us. We thank you, praise you, love, and honor you in Jesus' name. Amen. And so I pray you have a blessed day in the Lord. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel because when I upload videos, you'll get a notification and you'll know when there's a message on there because we're just trying to get this word in us so we can walk in the word of God because God has called us for such a time as this. And he's calling for believers to come together in the word, come together in faith, come together in prayer. And uh, which also reminds me when you're up, if you're up at 6 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, we have a wow movement as Watchmen on the Wall. We're interceding every morning, Monday through Friday, 6 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. And I'm on Facebook. Facebook. My name is Tony Brooke Brown. So you can go on there um, and join us. There's a phone number underneath this YouTube video if you prefer the phone line. Um, but join us if you're up. And also, in addition to the Monday through Friday, um, 6 a.m. prayer. We have a Monday night, 8 p.m. prayer, and that's for our sons and daughters because our young people, whether they're young adults, children, school age, college age, you know, the enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy, and so many are standing in the gap for their children. Our young people have gotten, um, you know, just under attack, you know, just uh, just being pulled in so many different things through the internet, the the uh, drugs and alcohol, the the television, music, all types of things. Things are pulling them away from God and pulling them into darkness. And um, we've been standing in the gap and getting praise reports and testimonies. And, you know, people's children are... Um just in need of our children are in need of us to stand in the gap for them so please join us 8 p.m eastern standard time every monday night um as we pray for our sons and daughters and it's a different topic every monday and also um don't forget to share this message with somebody who needs to share the gospel with somebody who's unsaved. And if you're watching this and you're not saved, I encourage you to receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior today. You know, the wages of sin is death, which means eternal separation from God. It's hell. But the thing is, is that the Bible tells us the gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus. And so we've all sinned. And so that we need Jesus. He came and he died and he took all of your sins upon him and paid the price so that we don't have to go to hell. We don't have have to be separated from God. When we receive Jesus as our Savior, we give our life over to him and we begin to live for God. And God adopts us into his family and makes us his children. And we have new life. It's starting over. It's being born again. Your life begins new. And the Bible says, old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. If you want eternal life and you want to know that when you leave this life, that you will be with God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, that you will have eternal life in the presence of God. Give your life to Christ today. Turn away from anything that is not of God. Repent of your sins. Ask God to forgive you and turn away from that and turn to God. God wants you to have new life, complete life. He wants you healed, whole, complete. He wants you to have his peace. He wants to strengthen you. He wants to guide you. He wants to use you. And he wants you to have hope past this life. So receive Jesus Christ as your Savior today. God bless you. And I'll see you next time.